Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And a, a reading from John's Gospel, the Palm Sunday Gospel. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today we greet him as our king, although we know he's crowned his thorns and his throne a cross. And we follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection, by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. And I, I would ask you to hold your palms up. Almighty and ever-living God, increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, and sanctify these palm crosses with your blessing. And we who hold high these symbols to hail Christ in his triumph, may follow Christ the King in exaltation, and may bear fruit by good works through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our hymn for Palm Sunday, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. And um, we have to keep our masks on for that, sorry. But um, I, I think we can stand and sing.
please be seated. Yep, go back to the colic of the passion. We have some technical difficulties, but with God, all things are possible. Almighty and ever-living God, together, in tender love for all our human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and suffer death upon a cruel cross. May we follow the examples of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. And we're going to share the responsive palm, psalm. Have mercy, mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I'm as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me they plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you. O Lord, I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and living loving kindness save me. Amen. The second reading comes from the book of the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The first two verses of our gradual Please be seated. The beginning of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, what do you want us to make the preparate, where? Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says my time is near, I will keep the Passover at your home with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they, while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it newly with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Through Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went to them with a to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two, two sons of Zebedee and began to grieve and agitate. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the, to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the, to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him a large crowd with swords and clubs from the priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword and drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how would the scriptures be fulfilled? which says it must happen this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be, be, may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Now we'll have two verses of the gradual hymn.
the liturgy of the palms with the Sunday of the Passion. Pretty all encompassing. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, Ed? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Anyone tell me who said that? Dickens, yeah. Any, anybody know what the next line is? No. No, this is an example of one of those things that's entered into the lexicon and uh, it's so profound, but uh, the, the next line, is, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. And uh, it goes on. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on it being received for good or for evil in a superlative degree of comparison only. From A Tale of Two Cities. I, I just have to keep checking. It's, it's, it's nothing to do with Ed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We seem to have a ghost in the machine this morning because uh, there's, there's supposed to be no automation. I supposedly took it all out. <laughs> anyway, for Dickens, um, a tale of two cities. Uh, the two cities were. London and Paris, yep. Um, today, Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, that's a tale of two cities too. Um, Jerusalem and Jerusalem. Same city, tale of two cities, two very different cities, all in the space of a week. Just two separate moments in time. But an unexpected, yet at the same hand, fully anticipated king, riding a young donkey is a sign of peace and fulfillment of prophecy, not aligning with the uh, crowd's expectations of a military conqueror. And uh, as we read the first paragraph from A Tale of Two Cities, I mean, that sounds so much like today, doesn't it? You know, so so much of what Dickens wrote, uh, it's, it just describes our situation to a T. You know, we don't know what's going on. Um, we're, you know, confused to say the least, frightened, uh, would not be too, uh, too strong a word. Uh, in this a time of confusion, and this, um, it's a tale of two people, too, isn't it? It's a, a tale of the people who welcome Jesus with open arms, and it's a tale of people who at the end of the week are shouting, crucify him. So it goes from, you know, Hosanna to crucify him with not much sort of rational discourse, you might say, in between. It's just, hi. Rrr. So, when we look at Scripture, we sort of, uh, uh, one of the things we try to do, I think, is listen to a story uh, and um, find ourselves in that story somewhere, right? Uh, are, are, are we the people at the start of the week? with the palms, or 
are, are with the people at the end of the week. And, and again, it's the same people. It's us. It's not us and them. It's us. It's us at various moments of time. So this Palm Sunday, as, as we proceed along the week, um, let's um, let's try to embrace. And I know we know it's coming, but at, at the same time, it's unexpected. But the Jesus is here in my life. You know, let's let's try to embrace that. If, if, we're, if we're looking for peace, Jesus is our peace. Peace mattered to Jesus. He came to bring us peace because he is peace. And how quickly we can forget the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. And may we be reminded of this blessing this blessing of Jesus' peace as we navigate the difficult days and trying times which lie ahead, not just on our, our journey to Golgotha, but our journey through COVID, uh, through all of, all of the other things that we seem to have to put on hold because COVID is just sort of, you know, it's ransacked our lives, it's taken over everything, and, um, you know, Christ is our peace. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to close with... Uh, okay. Um, right there, if people will stay. Uh, it's from a, a poem from a, 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 something called The Painted Prayer Book. You can, you can look it up. It's, it's, it's really nice. And it's um, I'm talking about the blessing. So this blessing can be heard coming from a long way off. This blessing is making its steady way up the road towards you. This blessing blooms in the throats of women, springs from the hearts of men, tumbles out of the mouths of children. This blessing is stitched into the seams of the cloaks that line the roads. This blessing is etched into the branches that trace the path, echoes in the breathing of the willing colt, the click of the donkey's hoof against the stones. Something is rising beneath this blessing. Something will try to drown it out. But this blessing cannot be turned back, cannot be made to still its voice, cannot cease to sing its praise together. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We gather before you, Lord, on this Palm Sunday, where some of us are able to be together in our church building, and others are joining us from home, and give you thanks for everyone in our faith community who makes this possible. For Reverend Robert, for Edie, for Martha, for Colin, for Ed, for Marianne, and Doug, and the property committee, who made sure, among other things, that we were all warm this morning, that our church was warm today, um, Lord, we pray that it will not be long before the world becomes a safe place, the safe place it once was, whether we, where we can all gather to worship, socialize, work, or just to be together. Please keep our hearts and minds on this goal, so we will do everything we can to accomplish this. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for strength patience and persistence for all of our religious leaders who are leading us and keeping us together 
in one of the most difficult times in our history. We pray that those of all faiths who gather together in worship, to worship and celebrate during this holy season, will do so safely and keep the health of their fellow worshipers foremost in their minds. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all of our loved ones who are sick or suffering in any way, and for those who love them and take care of them. In our parish community, we pray for May, Lisa, for Fred and Gloria Jean, for Max and his family, and all children who are suffering, for Patrick and James, and any others you may wish to name aloud or in the silence of your heart. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all those who are alone and lonely, those who are isolated from their families who live in different provinces or countries, families who have lost loved ones and not be able to come together to grieve, and for non-custodial parents who have not seen their children in a very long time. Give us hope in these uncertain times that one day we will all be able to gather together safely as family and friends were meant to. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin Holy Week and celebrate your resurrection from the dead next week, we remember all those who have died, including those who have died from COVID. The death toll from COVID-19 in Canada is nearly 23,000 people. And worldwide, it is over two and three quarter million people. We pray for all these souls, Lord, every one of them, someone's loved one, part of someone's family. Or someone's friend. May they rest in peace and rise in glory, and may we take comfort in the blessed assurance that one day we will all meet again in your kingdom. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Holy God, maker of us all. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, breath of life. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. Amen. And together. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please turn and greet one another in the name of Christ. Peace of Christ. Our offertory hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away.
together our offertory prayer. Gracious God, the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, makes us pleasing in your sight. Alone we can do nothing, but through his sacrifice may we receive your love and mercy. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May God grant to the departed rest, to the living grace, to the dying hope, to those who mourn comfort, to each of us a place in the kingdom of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love and remain with you always. Amen. Uh, please be seated for a few announcements, and I'll do the, I'll do the first one. Okay. There's our, our latest sign, which needs needs no amplification, other than other than Mike did a fabulous job as always. Thank you. Um, Monday Thursday service at at 7 p.m. here in the church, face to face. Good Friday service at 10 o'clock Friday morning. Um, also, face-to-face, uh, -face, person in person. Easter Sunday, the Sunday of the Resurrection, uh, at 10 o'clock in person here. Uh, the, uh, the Monday Thursday will be uh, the service of communion. Uh, Good Friday is never usually a service of communion. Uh, Easter is always a service of communion. Um, in, in addition, let me see the next slide. Um, recordings of these services will be available online. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly when. Uh, let's work that out with Mary Ann. But um, in addition, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in, in, um, in Holy Week, there'll be a brief, um, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes maybe service uh, uh, available each day at no specific hour. And uh, also on um, Holy Saturday, a, a brief a brief sort of a service. Um, it's, it takes place uh, symbolically in the garden during the uh, time Jesus' body rests in the tomb. So um, we'll be... Uh, I'm pleased to see you with as many of those as uh, you know, you're able to come. Uh, I'm just really pleased to see you. <laughs> really. <laughs> it's, it's really nice to look out and see. Even even under these, I I remember what you look like. <laughs> so. I want to join in Reverend Robert's expression of delight to see our faith family together. It's so wonderful to be worshiping God, singing his songs, and sing, making his prayers. 
together as a face family. Our recessional hymn will be after I say the dismissal. Lord of all hopelessness, is that what it's called? All right. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Can you share with us the uh, exit? I will repeat it so it goes into the microphone. So that is that both sides or those closest to the window? Oh, the ones closest to the aisle will go first. Then those closest to the window will exit. And then on your on your right, the, those closest to the aisle will exit. And then those closest to the window will exit. All of them starting from the back to the front. Social distancing, keeping six feet between you and your neighbor. Thank you, Edie. Thank you, Mike. And now let us sing. <laughs> 